In lecture two, we are going to look at uh, the, the remainder of oceanograph ocean geological oceanography. And here we start off with plate tectonics. And plate tectonics is related to uh, the theory of continental drift and seafloor spreading. So basically, the theory of plate tectonics, Earth lith lithosphere is divided into plates that moves. And uh, this combines both continental drift and seafloor spreading. So back in middle school, you probably had earth science when you studied plate tectonics when you did geology. And there are three basic types of plate boundaries. The first type of plate boundary is a convergent plate boundary. And this is where plates come together. Uh, one plate is going to be pulled beneath another plate. That's called subduction. And it is at a subduction area or a subdu subduction zone where crust is going to be destroyed. There are, there are three basic types of uh, plate interactions here when you talk about convergent plate boundaries. The first would be two continental plates that are coming together, and that would produce high mountain ranges. So this would be continental, continental. Then you could have two oceanic plates that are coming together, where one oceanic plate is going to subduct or move beneath the other. That would produce trenches and island arcs. And then the third uh, scenario could be a continental uh, crust com uh, converging with oceanic crust, and that produces trenches and volcanic mountain ranges. And here you can see examples. So when you talk to oceanic oceanic, as seen in the first picture there, you have that trench formation. And here you can see the example of that being the Aleutian Islands and the Aleutian Trenches up in Alaska. The second picture there, picture B, is oceanic continental. And you can see the oceanic crust is sliding beneath the continental crust there. This often produces volcanoes, as seen in the South American coast. And then the third type will be the continental continental collision, where you have a piece of continental crust that is sliding beneath uh, another piece of continental crust. And that would be the Indian plate. Uh, pushing against the Eurasian plate, creating the Himalayan mountains. Another type of plate boundary is a divergent plate boundary, and in divergent plate boundaries, plates are moving away from each other. In this scenario, crust is going to be created. It produces mid-ocean ridges. Mid-ocean ridges are, are, are small mountain ranges, or some very large mountain ranges, um, that are produced because you have the buildup of new crust. So at a convergent boundary, you have crust that is being destroyed. At divergent boundaries, you have crust that is being created. So our planet never really gets smaller or bigger because you have the constant building and breaking down of crust, continental and oceanic. So in a divergent plate boundary, plates are going to move away from each other. This is what we saw when we talked about seafloor spreading, where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is producing new uh, crust and it's moving towards away from that ridge and as it moves away from that ridge the crust is getting older in years. The last type of plate boundary is called a transform plate boundary and these plates are going to slide past each other. Here the crust is going to be conserved so it's not going to be created nor destroyed and often you uh, are thinking of transfer plate boundaries where areas of earthquakes occur. These would be the fault lines such as the San Andreas Fault in California. So here you can see the, the three types of plate boundaries. Uh, in a divergent, the motion of the plates is spreading, the effective constructive, so oceanic lithosphere is created, and the topography of the ocean floor would be a ridge or a rift, which is some type of mountain range and valleys. And then you have volcanic activity at those types of plate boundaries. The second type would be the convergent, the motion is subducting, where one plate is going to move beneath the other, such as oceanic lithosphere being destroyed as it slides under another oceanic or a continental crust. Uh, this is where you have trenches. So in a subduction zone, you get trenches, such as the Marianas Trench. You have volcanic activity at these zones as well. And then the last for, uh, type of plate boundary there in the picture C would be that transform plate boundary where you have lateral sliding and it's uh, conservative as far as its effect because the lithosphere is neither created nor destroyed. So there's no major effect and volcanic activity does not occur here. 
So plate movement. The mechanism for plate movement is convection currents within Earth's mantle, which pulls the plates. The seafloor spreading pushes plates. So you have this constant motion, this convection current, because you, if you look at the anatomy of Earth, you have the, the uh, mantle, and it's very slow moving. So that will pull plates, seafloor spreading pushes plates, and you have constantly the circular motion, which moves the plates around. This type of, of movement also relates to the hotspot theory. And hotspots are locations on Earth's surface that ex experience active volcanism for a period of time. Such as uh, when plates slide over hotspots, you get the pr production of volcanic island chains. And a good example of that would be the Hawaiian island chains out in the Pacific Ocean. So here you can see the, the hotspot. Uh, this would be representative of Hawaii. And you can see the hot spot there on the, the upper diagram where the islands would be youngest. And then as the, the plate moves, um, the islands increase in age. So they are moving in a northwest direction towards the Aleutian Islands, which come off of Alaska there. And in the second picture there, you could see hot spots and see how that all connects with the uh, convection current there. So you have that mantle plume that comes up from the outer core of Earth and it pushes upward and pushes uh, the magma out of that that hot spot and that just keeps building building and building until eventually that seamount will break surface to the water and then you'll have a small island forming and then you have the Pacific plate that is moving as well above that mantle plume and as that plate moves so there's your, your pushing and your pulling of those continental plates so plate movement. Here are predictions over the next several million years. Predictions uh, by geologists state that the Atlantic and Indian Oceans will continue to expand. The Pacific Ocean will shrink. The Australia will move north toward Eurasia. Southern California will pass San Francisco as it moves northwest. And New Ocean will form in East Africa, Rift Valley. And the Mediterranean Sea will close as the African plate moves north towards Europe. Here you can see the major plates. So here we have uh, the North American plate, South America plate. Here's the African plate, Arabian plate, Eurasian plate. Uh, over here we have a Caribbean plate. Pacific plate is pretty large. Cocos plate. There's the Juan de Fuca plate that we studied in our one activity. Here's a continuation of the Eurasian plate. So you can see the many different plates. When we talk about plate tectonics, that are our continents and on ocean basins sit within. Our next topic, Lecture 9, is coastal formation and dynamics. So coastal classification is based on tectonic activity, so these topics go hand in hand. And a very active coast is close to a, a tectonic boundary, and a passive coast is far from tectonic plate boundaries. So in the eastern United States, because the, the active plate boundary would be, be along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge where new crust is being formed, the coastal, eastern coastal United States is a passive margin because there is no tectonic plate boundary there. However, if you go over to western United States, California, Washington, Oregon, here you have plates that are, are coming together and you do have transformed plate boundaries. So you do have a lot of tectonic activity there. So these are very active coastal surfaces. So the Shepherd Coastal Classification System basically states that a primary coast is formed by processes not directly related to the ocean. So primary coast formation is caused by uh, river erosion or deposition, erosion from glaciers, tectonic activity, volcanic activity. And you have these types of activity occurring at a primary coast. You get from river erosion or deposition, you get the formation of deltas. And you could think of the Mississippi Delta as the Mississippi drains into the Gulf of Mexico. Here you have the fault. So this could be uh, any type of fault on the east or western United States, uh, western South, Afri or South America. We have all those fault lines. So that would be a lot of tectonic activity there and volcanism. And then here you have the formation of volcanoes. So we do see this here in uh, the western half of the United States as well, Mount St. Helens and the Pacific Ocean and some of those other small islands. Secondary coast coastal formations are formed directly by marine action. 
So here we get coastal formations that are caused by wave erosion, marine depositions such as the barrier island and lagoons, and marine organisms, reefs and mangrove swamps or mangrove forest, which you can see in the southern United States. So the Shepherd Coastal Classification System has a combination coast as well, and this is where we have both the combination of primary and secondary, so those that are not due to uh, marine interactions and, and also have marine interactions. That would be a continental coast. So coastal dynamics. At the coast, you you've have experienced the longshore drift, and basically the longshore drift is the tendency of material to move along the coastline due to the longshore current. So what we see here is we have this effective wave direction. So the waves are coming in, and as they're coming into the shoreline, they are, they are moving sand particles. You get this longshore current that moves perpendicular to the effective wave direction, and you get the, the circular motion. This would be the longshore drift. The sand movement goes down the island. So this would be the surf zone on that beach. So if we look at the sections of a beach, the beach changes due to accretion of sand and erosion with the season. So accretion would be deposition. So you have the depositing and erosion way of sand depending on the seasons. And the basic beach dynamics, you have the dune hill. The dune is the hill of sand towards the back of the beach, um, usually characterized by vegetation because it's the most important part of the beach and illegal to walk on because they prevent erosion. The back shore is the region that is rarely touched by seawater. It's the area where you suntan while at the beach. Then you have the foreshore, which is the part that water sometimes covers during high tides, and offshore, which extends beyond the low tide mark. And we'll look at more on beach dynamics in class with an activity. So here's a diagram of coastal beach dynamics. Here you have the, the continental hinterland or highland. Here you have the dune region. Here's the back shore. So this is the area where you would uh, uh, suntan the foreshore, sometimes covered there with uh, water. And then down here you have uh, other zones of the, the beach. So you just need to know the ones that we covered in the definitions back uh, on the previous slide. A coastal cell is a coastal region that changes in shape, but there's no net loss or gain in sand. This is due to the erosion, loss of sand, and accretion, gain in sand, at that coastal cell. Sometimes you have large-scale features uh, that occur due to the longshore drift and longshore current, and one of these features would be a spit. And a spit is a length of accumulated sand attached to land at one end, and it points in the direction of the longshore drift. Uh, you could see uh, here is a spit, here would be a salt marsh, here is the original coastline, so you get this, the longshore drift is coming in this way, and here you have the short-term direction of wind, so you get this spit formation, this small accumulation of sand that extends off of the land. Um, this is a, a, a good example of this would be in Cape Cod off the state of Massachusetts. So Cape Cod is a spit, and you can see that where at one end you have Hyannis down here at the lower end of the spit, in Cape Cod, and then as you come up here at the end of the spit, you would have uh, Provincetown, Massachusetts, and then in between you have Martha's Vineyard, uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, uh, all those other little small marine communities. You also have uh, a tombolo, and a tombolo is when spits extend between two islands. So here you can see that that uh, spit is extending between this island and that island right there connecting the two. So this is the Tombolo at Goat Rock Beach in California. And that's it for, for our coastal dynamics. Um, we have deep sea floor features and sediments to go over and then we'll be done with geological oceanography. Have a great day.